left of the box. I love this person. She's amazing. She's, I'll admit it, I'm a little bit jealous. I wish I could make content like her. Like she has the same kind of chill and humor that I think I have at times. And she's so concise with everything she says. I just absolutely love her and really wish that, like, that's the thing that you have to be careful about when you're doing your own content is just accept and acknowledge sometimes that your style is different. And even though ideally in a world where I could do exactly what I want, this is videos like hers would be what I would do. It's not my forte. It's not what I'm good at. I can practice and I can try, but until then you get stuck with these rambly live streams that I'm doing. <laughs> uh, so let's watch this. And this is um, just her wondering or, or asking people who are so against Justin Trudeau, like, what exactly is it that you're mad about? What do you all want? And by you all, I'm talking to the fuck Trudeau crowd. And I don't want to hear that you just want Trudeau gone. We go through a worldwide pandemic, that's not up for debate, which sends global economy into a tizzy. Yet Canada manages to not go into a recession. Our cost of living index is better than the US. If you look at other indexes like quality of life, we're pretty high up there. And when the feds try to roll out programs that are gonna help people, you guys are still not happy. I mean, we hear the complaints from the conservatives. Poiliev's rage farming is a crop unto itself. Canadians can't afford housing. You can cross the border into the States and get a mansion for pennies. Sure, if you want to wear Kevlar to work every day. We're going to axe the tax, but no other resolutions on how we're going to deal with climate change. Because climate change has been an issue for decades. We have the Kyoto Accord. We have the Paris Accord, which holds a lot of places accountable for the reduction of emissions. Now, you may not like the way that the feds are doing it, despite us getting rebates. But nobody has come up with a solution that's better than what's happening now. Even if the carbon tax was just applied to big business, high polluters, you'd still be paying a carbon tax because that would be passed down. But then we may not be getting rebates. And if you think we should still be getting rebates, propose something better. But this is the issue. The feds want to put out dental care. You guys don't want that. The feds want to put out pharmacare. You guys don't want that. The feds want to get involved in rent cappings to help Canadians to not get taken advantage of. Oh, fuck, you guys don't want that. The feds want to help with housing, because apparently we have a housing crisis, but you don't want that. The feds want to help people so that they can go out and work. So $10 a day childcare. Absolutely, you don't want that. And now the feds want to ensure that children who are going to school are fed, but you don't want that either. Not my responsibility to feed somebody else's children. If you can't take care of your children, don't have children. Okay, well, here's some free birth control. Fuck no, we don't want that. What do you want? And before I hear about jurisdictional issues and its provincial jurisdiction, there's a reason why the feds are putting out these programs. Because the conservative-led provinces aren't doing sweet fuck all for people. Except bitching and going to rallies. That is a huge problem uh, when it comes to filling in the gaps at the conservative premiers because they will purposely not implement something that the feds want them to implement because they simply do not like the government that's in power, even though it would help so many people in their province. And then instead of taking it as an opportunity to be like, you know what? Yes, we're a conservative pro uh, province, but we worked with the liberal government because we wanted what was in your best interest, the people. Uh, so we put our, our partisan issues aside and we worked on this issue in order to accomplish this great thing for you. So, you know, next next election, you can vote us in again because you know that we'll work with the feds to get what you want. But that's not how they work. They will literally just deny anything that the feds try to put through just because it's the feds trying to put through it. Like, that's it. A lot of the things that she just mentioned, like the rent capping and the carbon tax and the child care all the time you'll hear from like Pierre Polyev and the conservative premiers how oh it's a burden to the taxpayers or it's this and that and the other thing and yet they never come up with another solution they're just bitching and saying that they don't want it because 
They don't want the Liberals to have a win. Now, ideally, I would like the Liberals to win a lot more because if they actually fall through on their promises, then they'd be a decent government, but they don't. And I'll get to a very prime example of that later. Um, so, like, they do some good things. I, I've been talking about this a lot lately, especially since the election's probably coming up next year. So the government, this is when they start doing their carrot uh, part of their governing where they start giving out things. But it never goes far enough. It's always a lot of the same group of people that end up suffering, that aren't covered. And it's like, yeah, sure, dental care, but it's means-tested dental care. So a lot of people who are low income, who just don't qualify, like are just above that barrier, they still can't afford it. And even for the people who do qualify for it, it's not universal dental care. It's not all the dental care you need. It's up to a certain point that they'll cover stuff. You know, the liberal government is so far from good, but it's a lot better than the conservative governments who will literally just deny Canadians things they need to survive to stick it to the libs. And the federal programs like the $10 a day child care are being sabotaged by the conservative-led provinces. Danny's just been holding on to your money in Alberta until she got caught, and then they had to figure out how to get it to the people that needed to get it. Don't be mad at the feds. Be mad at the premier. And be mad at Pierre Poilier because he voted against any social program that's going to help people. Because he's also not interested in helping Canadians. He's right there with you, bitching and moaning, encouraging you to go protest, but not providing any solutions. So we have donkeys sitting on Highway 1 right now, mad because there's RCMP also sitting on Highway 1 right now, calling Canada a dictatorship. You've got people complaining about never being able to buy a house, but mad because if the provinces don't want to work with the feds in terms of housing, they're just going to go to the municipalities. You're mad at the wrong people because you just want to be mad. Did you ever think that maybe it's a good thing that the RCMP or police are sitting along Highway 1? Because as far as I know, and from any of the reports, they haven't touched any one of you. But not only are they there to make sure that you keep the peace. Oh, hold on. Protests that are still going on on Highway 1. Um, according to Cochrane RCMP, disruptions are expected to continue today. Is the province at all considering using the Critical Infrastructure Defense Act? And is there any direction being given to the protesters to move where they don't constrict some of these economic corridors? Well, look, let me give that direction. I don't support it when Extinction Rebellion glues themselves to the street and stops traffic. And I don't support anyone stopping traffic as well. You can protest, do it at the side of the road. Don't interfere with the movement of goods. Don't interfere with the movement of, of your neighbors. It's the reason why we have the Critical Infrastructure Act. And I would just ask people to be compliant with the law. One more time for the people in the back. Uh, I just wanted to follow up on a previous question there, Premier. Uh, you said in regards to the Critical Infrastructure Defense Act that you would just ask people to be compliant with the law. Can you just tell us yes or no whether you're willing to use that act to quell these protests if they continue to affect highway traffic? As you know, police make their own decisions on uh, arresting decisions. That's not a decision for a premier to make. I'm just asking people to accept that we have a, a Critical Infrastructure Act in place and I, I wouldn't, I don't endorse it when uh, left-wing activists want to block bridges and roads, and I, I don't endorse it when, uh, when people who are opposing carbon taxes also want to block bridges and roads. There's a way to be able to do peaceful protests and continue to uh, allow for the, the flow of goods and people. Interesting how she said when left-wing protesters block roads and when these other people, instead of saying, and when these right-wingers are blocking roads. She never said that. She, she calls out left wing, but she doesn't actually call them right wing. And also we have had example after example after example of where the police are very selective in who they arrest and charge. And I recently posted a segment video. I think it's up. Yeah. The horse manure one uh, where a protester threw horse manure at a cop because the cops in Toronto are finding really anything they can use to arrest people at some of the uh, protests, the pro-Palestinian protests. So it's usually the left-wing protests that the cops actually crack down on. But the right wing, which Daniel Smith didn't mention, they don't tend to crack down and even sometimes support, despite the fact that at the Coots border, when they were having the trucker convoy and stuff, they actually found a group of them that were plotting to kill 
law enforcement. Like the right wing are the violent ones. And if the police actually do their job against them and make sure that they protest within bounds or start arresting people, then it's going to be the right that's very quick to call out the police and say that, you know, they should be unalived and all that sort of stuff. And yet the police will support them over left-wing protesters every time. Every time. I don't understand that at all. And just as an aside, Danny, if you're using the term left-wing, you can use the term right-wing. Yeah, made the but same point. But back to my point, <laughs> RCMP and police are also there to protect you, the protesters, from anything else that may happen. And I've watched some of the lives. I'm surprised a lot of you haven't been arrested because some of it's not very peaceful. But anyway, what do you want? People are complaining on Twitter that all these social programs are gonna lead us to communism. Guess what? Social programs are socialist. A lot of Canada's programs are socialist programs. Things that you benefit from. I didn't see you all complaining when CERB was being doled out like candy. Oh no, you'll take that social program. Or collecting EI when there's an oil bust and y'all get sent back to the provinces that you came from. You'll collect that social program. Take the characters out of it. Justin doesn't exist. Poiliev doesn't exist. The programs are being implemented to help people for the very reasons that you all are bitching and moaning. And yet, just because you don't like the characters, you don't like the programs. It makes no sense. I don't know why I'm surprised. A lot of the decisions being made by these conservative provincial premiers are nonsensical. Protect the children, but don't feed them or house them or let their parents go to work to be able to support them. You make no fucking sense. And speaking of some of these protesters that make no fucking sense. Why is it so important to you that you come all the way here and, you know... I got three kids to feed. Uh-huh. And it's costing me a lot to feed them. I'm only on EI and it's only drawing me so much money to feed my kids. So this person is on employment insurance, okay. But there is a rebate though. I don't get it. Why not? Because I don't, I make just a little too much, I guess. I haven't got a check for a rebate, I don't know. Makes just a little bit too much on EI to get that rebate? Hmm. You haven't got a carbon tax rebate? Never got one. They say they give them every three months. They said they're giving them every three months, and I talked to any working class person right now, and they're not getting one. Say you haven't paid your taxes without saying you haven't paid your taxes. Because <laughs> as uh, David Brown here is pointing out, if Buddy isn't receiving the rebate, he's way behind on his taxes. It's almost like these guys are lying or something, or like the other woman was saying, they're getting mad for the sake of getting mad. Like they're told, these are the people that you're supposed to get mad at. And if he is on EI, then he should be getting those rebate checks. Like if he's actually like up to date on his taxes and stuff. So what are they mad at? And quite often when you go to these rallies and you see people talking to them, and they try to ask, like, what is it that you're angry about? But then you explain this or you explain that. Then they realize, oh, but I'm still mad. <laughs> like, they're still mad. They're still mad because they're conservative and they just know they're supposed to be mad at the liberals without any more deeper thought or analysis. They just know that their camp is supposed to be mad at the other camp, no matter what. And that's why I say I'm a nonpartisan progressive, because I call out all parties, no matter what camp they fall into. I've called out the NDP a lot, even though they're the more leftist of the parties, because I don't tie my principles to a party. That would be ridiculous, because parties have their own motives, objectives, things that change over time, depending on who's influencing it. My principles are influenced by what I see is going on in the world, my life experiences, my inner sense of what justice is. And if a party doesn't match up that, then I'll call them out. And if they do things that I find are good, I'll give them credit. It, it is just 
this whole campus partisan bullshit that we're constantly having to deal with is such a headache. Whereas if people actually just voted based on policies and not just policies, but ones that are actually implemented, our government, the, the way the parties are, would be so drastically different because when you take the partisanship out of it, most Canadians agree on most issues. It is just the way that it's packaged and branded by the different parties is where they're getting all the anger from.